Talk to me. BP's 90 over 60, rate of 110, respirations at 38. OK, we're going to trauma three, Baghdad. He was found at home. He dialed 911 himself, but he was down by the time we got there. Dr. Dottie, can you hear me? Are you in pain? Get ready to rotate. No breath sounds on the right, need an x-ray. Sharon, we need you in Baghdad. On my count, one, two, three. Transfer. <laughs> Get it out. Start a saline line, get a pleura back. X-ray clear. He's fluid in his chest. He just had an RFA yesterday. His liver must be bleeding into it. Yeah. Yeah? All right, he won't know with Oryx on the right. All right. We're going to put in a chest tube to drain the blood. Two of her said, five of morphine. Right away. Sorry about the shirt. Pulse is ready. All right, get a groin line in, will you? Yep. Dr. Halston. How's he doing? His liver is bleeding into his chest. I need to open him up to stop it. How close are we? All right, I'm in. Activate the MTP, tell him to send all the blood they have and meet me in the OR. Copy. You gotta stop the bleeding, I'm barely keeping up. Dr. Rhodes? Can't get to the diaphragm. The right lung is in the way. Can you collapse it? Give me some room. Yeah. Set up the argon plasma coagulator. Putting in a bronchial blocker right now. Alan. It's coming in a sec. Lung deflating. Good. OK, I see the bleed. I'll set with the Irby. Bleeding's slowing. It's still pretty oozy. How much product has he gotten? Six platelets, one cryo. We're going to have to warm him up in the ICU and continue transfusions, make sure he can form clots. Want me to close? No. My teacher, I'll close. He's been off the lorazepam for two hours, and he still hasn't woken up. And he's still completely reliant on the vent. So he needed me to tell you he should have come to by now? No, I need you to tell me why he hasn't. Could it just be that his poor liver function is preventing him from metabolizing the lorazepam? Dr. Rhodes, you called a neurosurgeon in to consult. Obviously, you suspect something else. I'm afraid he might have stroked on the table. And you were hoping I'd tell you otherwise. I can't. His pupils are sluggish. We need a head CT. You should have already ordered one. Call me when he's done in radiology. What do you see? You want the good news or the bad? Let me have it all, Sam. David didn't have a stroke. He's going to wake up, but the problem is here in his temporal lobe. It's a mass. The cancer spread to his brain. Metastatic hepatic carcinoma. It's very bad news. Is it operable? No. Hold on just a second. The core of the mass is centered over area five, the superior parietal gyrus. Meaning? If I resect, he'll have a stereognosis. He won't recognize objects by touch. You won't know the meaning of sensations or be able to coordinate between your visual and tactile systems. And that would be a good outcome. You can't be sure that's going to be the case. Without the surgery, what can I look forward to? Headache. I already got that. Loss of motor skills, bodily functions, uh, neuropathic pain, seizures, delusions. A smorgasbord. 
I'll give surgery a shot. It's your call, David. You know my reservations. All due respect, Dr. Abrams is not the only neurosurgeon in this hospital. No, but he's the best. No surgery. Dr. Downey, we should at least get a second opinion. I'm satisfied with Dr. Abrams' prognosis. Thank you, Sam. David. By the way, Sam, I've always appreciated your bedside manner. Come back later. I may feel like some company. Between the incision and my head, I'm not sure which hurts worse. Those fentanyl boluses aren't doing much for you. I'll order a morphine PCA. I hate morphine. Makes me loopy. Turn that up a little, will you? How's that? Yeah. I'd hoped to make it to the islands one more time. I've been flying such a hassle these days. As soon as we can, we'll get you out of the ICU and into a room. One with a view. I guess we're all given our measure of suffering. God's medicine. 